He's the greatest manager in the Premier League's history. In fact, he takes some beating in any era. To mark his achievements, the League Managers Association have named their Manager of the Year award after him. Well, I'm surprised and I think that uh, it's a fantastic honour, really. And when you look at the list of managers who have won this trophy, uh, the, the Manager of the Year trophy over the years, you know, it makes you really aware of, of the achievements. Matt Blisby, Bill Shankly, Bob Paisley, Brian Clough. They were legends, really, and you know, they, they left a fantastic legacy of how their team has played. So looking back now, what does Sir Alex think of his own legacy? I was lucky, it was at the right club. There's no question about that. Manchester United is a, a special romantic club that um, it's easy to fall in love with. When you've finished managing now and you're retired, do you look back now at the title race and think, oh, I'd, love to, I'd love to get my teeth stuck into this now? Well, no, really, no. I, I, I made up my mind I was looking forward to retiring because I think I'd, I'd done what I wanted to do in life, you know, without question. And there was always a time when I got to my 70s I was going to retire. I wasn't going to end up wimping up that touchline. And um, I think I picked the right time. But there are moments when, of course, you miss it. You miss the banter in the dressing room. You miss the humour of some of the players. And you miss the cup finals. There's no question about that. Did you have any moments just after you retired when you suddenly get up, crack a dawn in the morning and be getting ready to go to the training ground and suddenly realise you didn't have to go anymore? Yeah, well, the first few days, that's, I get up at the normal time, 6 o'clock. And the first, there uh, was the... Uh, after the end of the season, the Monday morning, I would normally get in because it was a really important day, the day after the season's finished, because you really want to start thinking about any, what, any business you're going to do. And David Gill and I would always meet that Monday after the last game to finalise our thoughts and go about preparing for a sign and whatever. And um, then I realised, you know, nobody will be there. <laughs> Looking at Arsene Wenger as well at Arsenal at the moment and yourself, do you think those days of having managers at a club for such a huge amount of time are, are coming to an end? Um, I hope not because I think that that stability that a manager Arsene Wenger has brought to Arsenal and Brian Clough at Notts Forest, myself at United, because there's no evidence that sacking a manager brings success, but there's evidence that Arsene Wenger himself and Brian Clough uh, can bring success with long-termism. And um, at the moment, of course, the ridiculous situation about the sort of pressure that Arsene's done under, um, I just wonder, really, do they realise the job that Mar Arsene's done? The one I think the most amazing thing about him is this. He's come through the, a forest of, of um, criticism for months now, and he's never bowed. He's seen it right through. He's shown a determination, a stubbornness. And I think when you look at that, that's a quality. These are qualities that I'm not sure they'll ever get a manager like that. So it's quite easy to say, yeah, get rid of him. And what do you get? Who are they going to get that can keep that club the way they are, the way they've been for the last 20 years? So it's, I really feel sorry for him because I think he's been shown outstanding qualities and how he's handled the whole situation. It's, I don't know if many could have done that. So what does he make of the man who's led Chelsea to the title? Fantastic. His energy, is, he sees energy in the, in the pitch. There's always a true saying that your team mirrors a manager, and that's what they've done with him. And his team have stayed top of the league for almost the whole season, really. They lost to Arsenal early on, but in Liverpool, but since then... Phew. And what about the manager who pushed Chelsea all the way, Maurizio Pochettino? He's got a lot of youth in his team, which is uh, augurs well for the, the future, really. I, I believe in that. I really do. I've always believed in that. And I believed in youth all my life. And uh, the, the value is twofold. One, that they'll always remember the, the person who gave them a starting life. Always will. And secondly, they create a loyalty base that's there for life. It means the, the young players that we had coming through still keep in touch with me. Um, and I think that is an indication how well it works. And also long-termism. I don't think short-termism -term works. I really don't. I think that 
There are teams who can buy all the time and sort of remain successful. I'm sure it happens, but on on a general theme, I don't think long, long short termism works. And with Tottenham, uh, to me, it looks as if there's a long termism there. They're building something that looks pretty good. What do you think when you look across town and see Pep across the Liverpool and you see Jurgen Klopp? <laughs> they're all they're always with threats. You have to accept challenge. With Manchester United, if you can't accept a challenge, you shouldn't be there. And when Chelsea came along and Arsenal came along, we accepted the challenge, we gone with it, relished it. We had players that were able to keep, quite capable of handling all that. And that's that's exactly what Manchester United should be. Accept the challenge. It's good for you. And he was delighted when Claudio Ranieri won last year's award. I think it's like um, Sergio Garcia winning the Masters. The time will come for him. He'd been trying so many times that eventually when he did it, I think everyone was so pleased for him. And the same with Claudio. He's been all around the world in teams and seconds so many times that you say he really deserves it. What of the man who's now in charge of United? He was a very talented manager, no question. I think they've done real well. I think they've had the draws and they've played real well in all those draws. Um, if they'd even six of those draws turned into wins, it's 12 points. You know, they've been up there. And um, hopefully we can start winning things because I'm sure that's what he wants. He's been an admirer of yours for years. Do you still chat along the way? Yeah, yeah, we do from time to time, as I did with Louis Van Gaal, as I did with David Moyes. They're my manager, you know, and I think that uh, the United directors in my time were always very supportive of me. And I hope that continues. Current managers all look up to Sir Alex. So who did he look up to as a younger man? Matt Busby. He was in his later years, but he was still a fantastic man in terms of the help and advice he gave me. And I always remember when I came into Old Trafford in the afternoons after being at the training ground, you knew he was in because you could smell his pipe. You know, his pipe smoke was all over the place. And in a little office at the top of the stairs, uh, at the Old Trafford and I would drop in to see him and he loved, he loved that, he loved the, the company and uh, you know, he was really terrific, a great man, a great humility about him. And he remembers meeting Bill Shankly just before a crucial game which would decide who won the title. Shanks came out, hands in the pocket, you know, with Jimmy Cagney and he says, come in boys. So he takes us into the boardroom and then Dad began to all these photographs in the boardroom of all the great players, Rage Carter, Peter Doherty, Nat Lofthouse, you know, it was, a, it was a, an array of great talents. And my father played with Peter Doherty, but I didn't have the courage to tell him that, because you, you really know this man. So it goes on and on and on, and I look at my watch, it's 25 past seven. And I says to, to Shankway, I says, Mr. Shankway, it's 25 past seven. He says, aye. I says, should you, should you not be with your team? And it's a like half half past seven kickoff. He says, son, if I've got to be with my team tonight, there's something wrong. Brilliant. So he walked along the corridor, and um, Tommy Smith standing at the entrance to the stadium, bouncing the ball. I always remember that. He says, go on, son, take him home. I think that's what, not surprises you, but I think that I admire that these great managers had like a humility about them. Their feet were on the ground. They never get carried away. They knew what kind of industry they were in and they built fantastic teams. It seems only fitting that Ferguson, who himself is now one of those greats, should have the LMA's Manager of the Year trophy named after him.